what's, what's going on with you? He looked down and he says, well, I'm a practicing homosexual. I said, brother, I can't pray the prayers you wanted me to pray, but I can pray for your deliverance. No, no, I don't want that. And he stormed out angry. <laughs> you know, that's, that was a, a word of knowledge gave me. I never saw this guy before in my life. I didn't know him from Adam. So, you know, it's, these are gifts that God gives you when he wants you to use them to help people. I wish he had turned another way. The gift of faith, the gift uh, to trust God and inspire others to trust God, uh, no matter the conditions. Some of you guys, some haven't heard. Uh, I, God gave me, when I got baptized in the Holy Spirit, he gave me mountain movement faith. I mean, you couldn't do anything that would move me. And uh, one day, I had, I had owned a chain of record stores and head shops in Dayton, Ohio. Five stores. And I, I was always saved. I knew the Lord since I, as long as I can remember. I was Catholic. But I loved Jesus with all my heart, and I knew he was my Lord. I never doubted that. I lived like hell in high school, binge drinking with the boys and stuff. But all my friends called me preacher because I was talking <laughs> about Jesus all the time. Bad witness, maybe, but it was getting through. So um, I walked out. I called the board of directors, which were all Jewish millionaires. And they said, Dick, what you call this special board meeting for? I said, I'm leaving the stores. What do you mean? We're all just starting to make money. I said, not me. I'm not taking any money. I don't want you to give me any money for my stock. I'm giving it to you guys. I'm out of here. And they said, what is a, what's going on with you? <laughs> the comptroller, who was an older man, taught me a lot about counting. He was CPA. He, he looked at we to become friends, and he said, Dick, what are you doing? I said, I'm going to make this short and sweet, guys. Jesus Christ. And he goes, oh, I thought you were serious. I said, I am serious, Sam. <laughs> And I just walked out with nothing. All my, I had joined Full Gospel by that time. All my Full Gospel friends were saying, Boy, is God going to bless you? I can't believe you just walked out of your company with nothing. I said, I had to. And uh, we went just the other way. I was three house payments behind. They were threatening to take the house. I had two little boys. And I had taken a new job as a new car salesman. And I went to the dealership early before it was open. And the sun was just coming up and coming through the front windows. My cubicle with my glass was facing the front window. And I laid down my head. No one, it was closed. The dealership wasn't open. I laid my head down on my desk and I cried out to God. I said, Father, they're going to take my house. I got two little boys. And somebody says, are you Dick McBain? I looked up. This guy's standing in the doorway. The sun was so bright, all I could see is a shadow. I said, yeah. And I'm trying to see what he looked like. He said, I want to buy this Corvette right here, which is the cream of the crop for Chevrolet's. I made all three house payments that day. <laughs> that day. Guess what? I never saw that guy again. Some angel drove off in the Corvette that day. <laughs> and I'm telling you, that was an angel. Never heard from him again, never saw him. And he loved his Corvette, I think that. <laughs> but but while that was happening, I was our sewer backing up in the backyard. And I had Zippo money. I just paid the three house payments. We were broke. And uh, this pool started building in the backyard. This is July in Ohio. In those days, we didn't have air conditioning. So right under our bedroom window, you had to have the windows open with the screens in the summertime. It was hot, July. All the neighbors started complaining. This thing got bigger and bigger, deep, had all the junk in it that you can imagine. And I would come home from that dealership and lay and sit down at that edge of that cesspool and I'd pray to it every day and I'd read the word of God to it. And say, bring the Bible out with me, just read it. And I just trusted God I was going to do something. I didn't have a clue. I went down the basement, laid hands on the pipes, told him to be open in the name of Jesus, nothing happened. <laughs> didn't move me. I just kept doing that. Finally, my wife thinks I've lost my mind. And uh, she calls all my friends who I grew up with. You know, the groups like you see in old movies. Goonies and so these are the guys you grew up with and did everything with. They all came over, one of them was an atheist, and uh, they all told Jackie, you've got to commit him. He has really lost, these are people that I've known all my life. <laughs> he has lost his mind. They thought I had. I didn't care. I told Jackie, you're just going to have to trust in Jesus, Lord, or Jackie, because this is going to happen. She didn't believe it at the time. Two weeks later, big people calling, I walked 
by the bedroom window when I got up in the morning to go get my suit on. I walked past the window. I went back. I looked out the window. It was gone. This huge puddle with everything in it was gone. I went out and crawled through the grass to find some evidence that had been there. There wasn't anything in the grass. The grass was the same height and color as the other. Nothing in it. Pipes were open. Never had another problem with the pipes. God sent angels down there and cleaned that mess up. And it's because I just stood in faith and I wouldn't accept anything else. Now, I'm nothing special. I just had determined myself, I'm going to believe the Word of God or I'm not. Yeah, I'm believing. And this is the kind of things he did for me. I had so many of these. So um, the gift of faith is a very important gift and you can develop it and build it by being in the Word of God. Gift of healing is the wondrous gift of using God's healing power. Some people have the gift of healing and others get it periodically as God wants to give it to them. We can all pray for the sick whether you feel you have the gift or not. Gift of miracles, display the signs and miracles that, uh, that give credibility to God's word and the gospel message. And the gift of prophecy. The gift to declare a message from God. Beware of false prophets. Prophecy is very real. But in my all these years, as a leader and charismatic and as an executive, people come up to me in front of big groups and say, Dick, the Lord told me to tell you you're going to have a worldwide healing ministry. And I just look at them and I, the Lord never told me that. I'd say, well, thank you. As soon as the Lord tells me, I'm gone. I didn't know what else to tell me. Mm -hmm. I didn't want to put it down. Mm -hmm. Never happened. You know, some people mean well. Right. But you got to be careful what you hear. Most of these people I knew that were prophets and had prophesied properly, I think just wanted to mean well and, and they got thought and thought it was God. You got to be careful of that. <coughs> the gift of discerning your spirits to recognize something is truly from God in accordance with righteousness, whether or not it's from God. You know, that's a very important gift. Gift of tongues, communicate foreign language, and I have experienced this, converse with those who speak that language. We all have the availability for a prayer language, but we don't all speak with tongues because that's a spiritual gift of the Holy Spirit that gives it to you. I was at this big church meeting with Dr. Doug Gerard, who was a very close friend of mine, big in full gospel. And uh, Dr. Doug, he was given this meeting, and I'm sitting in the front row. And so all of a sudden, he gets hit, he gets hit with a, a tongue message for the body, and he starts giving this message in tongues. When he gets done, he says, and Dick McBain's going to interpret this. I'm sitting there going, what? What did he just say? Get up, Dick. I got up before I knew it. God just gave it to me. I didn't know. And then I sat down and I started grieving, thinking, was that really from here? Did I just try to do that to get out? And at the end of the meeting, a woman came from the back of the crowd. She came up with tears running down her face. And she says, you can't believe that was exactly what I've been praying to the Lord about. So God confirmed it to me so I wouldn't be doubting. Yes. These are gifts the Holy Spirit gives. It's, you know, step out. Gift of interpreting tongues, I don't have that very often. I've had it. Uh, I, every once in a while, the Lord uses me to give a, a message in tongues. And probably six, seven times out of ten, I give the interpretation to, which is scriptural. But there's other times that I've given, and Dwight Keith's given the given interpretation of some other people that I knew gave the interpretation before I even got to it. So you just have to be willing and not trying to aggrandize yourself. Right. It's not for that purpose. It's for helping. Gift of administration, gift to keep things ordered and in agreement with God's principles. The gift of helps. Many of us have this. When you're helping people out, that's a spiritual gift. And God wants us to use that. Let me see the hands of every businessman in the room. Okay. Now let me see everyone who has received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. It's okay if you haven't yet. Okay, so just about everybody has. Are you excited yet? Right. Hold on, we're just beginning. Do you realize that Satan has no power over you unless you give it to him? And we have the authority of the risen Lord to overpower. Remember, being a minister in the marketplace or anywhere else necessitates the feeding on the Word of God. It's only here other than direct revelations or prophecy that we find our authority, the need to be baptized in God's Holy Spirit, 
building our faith, realizing our calling. God does not want us to stand alone or stay away from other believers. Why? Because the Word of God says iron sharpens iron, and there's power in agreement. That's why. We know this can be accomplished by what? Attending church, going to Bible studies, joining with prayer partners, attending Christian events, and or joining groups like Full Gospel Business Group. <laughs> We're a spirit-filled fellowship of men working together in many outreach <laughs> ministries. If you want a ministry aside of what you might be doing in your church, Full Gospel has that. We have the Georgia Men's Advance. Um, that's, that was our 43rd year, I think. Uh, that's, this is all Rocky Eagle groups down there. And then we have uh, the Godmobile. And if you want to find a way to minister the Word of God and see people saved in numbers from you, go join the Godmobile or join a session. Bob Elsasser runs the Godmobile program in Georgia. He'd be happy to have you. The guys that go there, they just get glued. They say, I can't leave this. This is just something else, you know. And, and the Holy Spirit just attracts those people to the tents and the, and the vehicles, just like a magnet. And they don't even know why they're there. And it's the Holy Spirit <laughs> drawing them so they can get saved. That's the Godmobile. Literally thousands are saved every year through the Godmobile. Approximately 10,000 people are saved in the United States every year through the Godmobile program. 10,000 come to the door. And then we have our prison ministries. Tom Allenson, who's a member here and fighting right now. Uh, he's in charge of nationally of our prison ministry in Georgia, too. And you go into prisons around the country, and you minister to the people inside. Then we have our chapter meetings and, and different venues for those. And, and the full gospel is testimonies over a meal. That's what we do. We don't preach. We don't teach. We give testimonies. We're a testimonial organization. Uh, salvation, baptism, the Holy Spirit. Look, we do fast. Oh, sorry. Anyway, that was the end. But... Um, some of these things that I've been talking about, I want to give you a couple of times. 153. Is it time to quit? 153. I want to hear about your the rest of your testimony on uh, Vietnam. We're going to start that. Okay. <laughs> Get started. Some of these guys, you some of these guys have heard this too many. Seven minutes plus whatever it takes yeah. to give us that okay. testimony. I'll just break it into it easily because there's too much detail. Um, I was a sophomore in college. I got drafted out of college, which wasn't supposed to happen, and sent into the army. And the army sent me to Vietnam, and Vietnam put me in the 101st Airborne Division in the jungle. I lived in the jungle on the ground for a year, and. Um, during that time, it was combat. During that time, I had many incidences. My best friend uh, and I were going to get our stuff together to go out on this mission. And he said, do you want to get the sea rations or the ammo? The ammo was farther to get. I said, I'll get the sea or He said, let's flip for it. So I flipped, and I won. Those were heads. And he got killed going to get the sea rations. So the flip of the coin decided whether my best friend or I was going to die that day. God's hand, although he was Pentecostal and I wasn't at the time, so I know where he went. He had a brand new baby he'd never seen. Um, and then uh, we took this uh, job to uh, get a regiment of NBA soldiers off of a mountain in the jungle, and it took two weeks. And during that time, um, we would uh, we did a bunch of bombing and. Uh, Shelling all night, we were at the hill was just shaking, I couldn't sleep. And then the next morning, the CO calls and tells my lieutenant, who was an airborne ranger, it's like a Navy SEAL when we go on He said to him, uh, Lieutenant Richardson, I want you to take three other men and go recon that area. He said, come on, guys. I said, I'm not going. 
That's suicide. Those guys are waiting for us. They get down on the mountain when we bomb them. They come up just like they've been doing all week. Anyway, long story short, we went. And uh, the four of us moved out into this. Many went across the clearing of the napalm and got into the jungle on the other side. And they opened up with an enemy machine gun and shot them across the head. And just heard them scream. We don't leave anybody behind. So then a lieutenant goes running across that opening. And he goes up into the brush. Then Sergeant Brennan goes running through there. And I'm the rear guard. So I've got a radio. And I'm sitting there shooting all the the enemy off. And the enemy has surrounded us. A big number are all around the four of us. And I'm in an opening. And I'm looking at these guys. And they're all shooting right at me. And the bullets are hitting everywhere but me. Mm -hmm. I'm crying. <laughs> and I'm saying, Father, yes. I'm your man. Get me out of this. And he did. He put his hand over me. I got up the lieutenant who just had his arm blown off. And he used to hold it with one arm. And um, I was crawled out in front of him to hold off the enemy. They threw a grenade at me. I threw it back. And he threw a satchel charge at me. And I tried to reach and couldn't get it. Blew me up. Went up in the air. Came down. Checked to see if I had my arms and my legs. And I did. So I grabbed a lieutenant's weapon, because mine was gone, and started holding off the enemy again. Just when we thought we were about dead, our, group, our guys broke through to us finally. Mm -hmm. And uh, so they put me on a medevac chopper, because we were a bunch of us <coughs> wounded, and a crash on the way to the hospital. <laughs> May 9th, 1970 was the day. And I used to tell people, worst day of my life, but actually it might have been the best, because God brought me through all that mess. Yeah. And there was no other explanation. <clears throat> And uh, through all that combat and all that stuff, I went and just did my job. And when I came home, I had two bronze stars, a purple heart, uh, air medal for making 25 combat assaults by helicopter. I had all these medals. And I was in the paper, and I, I kept thinking, why is every one of these guys was doing what I was doing? What, what is this? I never did understand it, but they put me in for it. It was God's hand. The whole everything he was done. I told the people that, and I still tell people that. It's all the Lord. I, he must knew he not must he knew that he wanted me to do some other things, which is what we're doing here today. Amen. So um, had too many of those to talk about them all, but uh, stepped over a landmine and uh, anti tank line, and I just missed it. Walked up, a guy came up with a lieutenant, hit it, 